Kamal Hussein served as foreign minister in Bangladesh's first post-independence government. He went on to form a political party known as Gonu Forum. Most recently, his opposition alliance suffered massive losses in the general election. So are his dreams of what he describes as bringing back democracy to Bangladesh over? I'm Shamim Chowdhury speaking to Kamal Hussein one on one. Dr. Hussein, you've made some very serious allegations about the way uh, this year's election was conducted. Uh, many misappropriations, a whole list, in fact. What kind of evidence do you have to support this? Well, you have seen our newspapers. It's full of reports from all over Bangladesh, so that it's not just in a few locations, but in most uh, sort of locations where people have complained that, in fact, there has been no election. Polling agents have not been there. People have not been allowed access to, to, to the actually vote. The ruling party muscle men were playing a role which in fact effectively de and in fact were allowed to do things with impunity. I mean, I was very fortunate in having been uh, enlisted into politics by Bangun Sheikh Mujib. I was his counsel and he was in the treason case against him. And of course, it was very instrumental in, in the framing, dra drafting of the constitution. Bangladesh was created to vindicate people's right to vote. I had been pressing hard that we should have an election, a free and fair election. There have been some observers here, and they seem to be reasonably satisfied with the process. I have certainly had no one speaking to me. The best of my knowledge, you speak to other colleagues. They have had no approaches from them. You stood as an opposition alliance against the ruling Awami League, which is part of a grand alliance, and yet you were unable to name a single person who could lead uh, a government should you have won the election. You can understand how this may uh, cause some kind of confusion among voters, raise some questions about your uh, credibility as a political organisation. You could name half a dozen people who would be very suitable to be very effective heads of government. And they're there in our, in our own party and in the, in, in the other parties which are part of this alliance. You say that there are four or five people who would have been sure. very good prime ministers. Why not just name one? This coalition came up recently and we didn't want any sort of uh, contestation about between the possible candidates. I was very clear in it that I would not be among those people because of my age and, and the fact that, you know, I had done my bit 30 years ago. But there were among us very promising people. There was a time when you had a very close mm. personal relationship mm -hmm. with Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. You were such a close part of that family and there is an estrangement now. What, how does well, that make you feel? Well, I would like to think of it in terms of, you know, political differences. She used to call me uncle. You cannot deny it has been able to govern to some degree of competence. Many people would agree that. Many people support the Awami League. Uh, it has been credited for Bangladesh's incredible economic growth. I mean, our people have done remarkably well, despite in notwithstanding bad governance, malpractices at the, at the administration level, the corruption in, in administration, the failure to... Uh, respect the rule of law and all the rest of it. Have you lost faith in the democratic process in Bangladesh? More than 50% of the population are below 30. So I have great faith that these people will have this vision of Bangladesh, the potential that there is for a, a Bangladesh which is will not only have material prosperity, but what is so important about Bangladesh is that we said we'll build a working democracy and have social justice at the same time. This combination of democracy and social justice is what distinguishes our, the aspirations of our people. And you will find that, you know, well, they have been doing their part, producing, as I say, the farmers, the um, women and workers in the field, those who are working abroad, they're all contributing. I seem to think that the, what has been done by the government is self-destructive. They will contribute more to replacing themselves than anyone else. Kamal Hussain, thank you very much for talking to TRT World. Thank you.